Hello, everyone. Uh, here we are with another lecture. This time we're going to be talking about installment buying, um, or what I would probably rather say is buying expensive things. Um, so this idea of installment buying, we'll, we'll get into exactly what it is, but um, it, it's basically taking out a loan that you're going to make uh, payments on. Um, and those payments tend to be periodic. They tend to be uh, monthly, maybe they don't have to be monthly, but that's typically the case. So we're we're talking about things like like uh, automobiles, uh, maybe furniture. Um, those are those are two examples that we'll see today. Um, but other other expensive things that that you'd probably put like a down payment on, and then you'd uh, uh, finance the rest of it. So you you'd pay some interest on the rest, and we'll, we'll get into all this. But um, let's go ahead and get into some definitions first. So. An installment loan, so this is a loan that we're taking out. It's a loan that you pay off by making um, installments, hence the name, installment loan. And the definition of this installment is just, it's a payment. Um, but those payments are periodic and they're not all of it. So this, th think about this like, like, a, like an automobile, like you're buying a car. Um, you, you have a monthly payment on your car. Um, you know, if you go try to buy a $10,000 car, maybe you put, you know, $1,000 down. So there's 9,000 left over that you have to pay. Well, that 9,000, along with some interest, is going to get split up into a bunch of payments, um, typically monthly, and then you're going you're gonna to make those payments. And so this is the idea of an installment loan. As I said before, we see this um, with automobiles primarily, um, also with uh, more uh, with expensive purchases like furniture or things like that. Um, so, um, uh, some notes to about installment loans, just some some, uh, some things to highlight. So we can say that an installment loan is fixed or variable. We're just going to deal with fixed installment loans, and that's where your payments are the same every time. So your monthly payment or your quarterly payment or whatever it is, it doesn't change at all. If your installment loan was variable, then those payments might change, but we won't deal with those. Those are a bit more complicated. Um, a lot of times, installment loans, again, th think, of, think about like going to buy a car. Um, a lot of times they, they require you to put a down payment. Um, sometimes they don't require it, but they just highly recommend it. Um, as we'll see, the more money uh, that you put for a down payment, the less interest you accrue, uh, which keeps your total cost down. Um, but a lot of times installment loans, they either require it or they recommend a down payment. And that down payment, it's just that upfront money. Um, what you'll hear me say is the amount of money that you pay on day one is your down payment. And then the amount of money you pay from day two onward, that's your installments and some interest as well. So keep that in mind that that definition of a down payment is just how much you pay right off the bat, right in the very beginning when you're still um, at the auto mall or when you're in, in the furniture store or wherever you're purchasing this, you know, whatever you're buying. Um, that's that down payment. So uh, we're going to get into some more definitions here, to, into some terms as well as some formulas. And I can't emphasize this enough, uh, the importance of trying not to necessarily just memorize these formulas word for word um, and more understanding what the terms mean. Um, I can guarantee you that as problems change and as they get more complicated and as they get not as obvious, um, it is very easy to get mixed up on what uh, where to, how to apply formulas that you might memorize. But if you understand what each of these terms mean, that'll really help you be able to figure out these, these, uh, the formulas that are associated with them. To sort of even emphasize that point, you'll notice that I don't really use letters very much in these formulas that I'll, that I'll explain in a second. Um, here I do down at the bottom, but uh, most of the time I'm not, I don't really use the letters to describe all of these. I, I just keep them with the full written out words. And that's again, just to really emphasize that point of trying not to memorize formulas. So let's go ahead and get into these. We're gonna start with amount financed. And, and this is a term that you hear a lot uh, again, I'll keep using this car example. You go buy a car, you make a down payment, and they say, great, you're going to finance the rest of it. Uh, so you buy a car for $10,000. If you put 1000 down, then you're going to finance 9000 And what that 9000 represents, it's the amount of money that you have to pay interest on. So basically, when you go to buy a car, if, if you don't have all of the money in hand in cash to pay them, then 
they're going to say, all right, that's fine. Uh, give us what you have as your down payment. And then we'll, we'll subtract that off of the price. So let's say you buy uh, a $20,000 car and you put $3,000 down. Let's go ahead and mark this. So $20,000 car and you put $3,000 down. That's, that's going to be $17,000 dollars left over that you haven't paid them yet for your car. And so what they allow you to do is they say, great, you can finance that, which means you're going to pay this 17,000 over uh, 60 months or over 72 months or some, some period of time with cars, it's generally 60 months, uh, but that's, that's not really important. You're going to take this 17,000 that you're financing and you're going to pay it uh, generally monthly. Um, you're going to pay it over time. But as sort of a charge for them saying, hey, we're going to let you, you know, you don't have to pay us the 17000 today on, on, at the moment you're buying the car. You can finance it, but we're going to charge you some interest on it because you're paying us over such a long period of time. And so we call that amount the amount financed, and it's what you have to pay interest on. And you find that amount financed exactly by taking whatever the price of it is that you're buying, you subtract off how much you give them on day one, and this is just how much is left over. It's how much you haven't paid yet, and so interest is going to accrue on that amount. Um, so we got that right there. That's that's good. Uh, we got the amount financed. Um, a lot of times you'll hear me uh, use, or in, in my work, I should say, you probably won't hear me say this a lot, but I will, I will actually call the amount financed uh, equal to F when I'm doing problems, um, just to give it a letter just for shorthand, uh, I'll, I'll call it F. We'll notice that that appears down there. Uh, but yeah, I'll call that F. Um, there we go, we got that. So um, continuing on. We have another definition of a uh, total installment price, um, and this this one is this one is uh, is for whatever reason hard hard for for students to remember. Um, but basically, it's just it's the total amount of money that you pay. So you're buying a car; um, it's it's everything that you pay for that car. And the big thing that I want to emphasize is that it that is not the price of the car and that's because there's interest here and so the so let's say you buy a car you're going to buy a car for twenty thousand dollars well presumably you don't have the twenty thousand dollars to hand them in cash and leave and say thank you this is my car now you're going to finance some of it and so interest is going to accrue on that financing and so you're going to pay some extra interest in addition to that twenty thousand dollars that the car cost and that's where your total installment price comes into play it's everything that you pay it is not the total price that is very different the price of the car or the price of your furniture or whatever you're buying that's just the price that's what's on the tag but the total installment price is everything that you pay and there's a couple different ways that you could figure this out. Um, I don't actually list it here, but I, but I probably should. You, you could say that this is the price of the item plus the interest that accrues. And right there, you'd say, hey, I'm going to buy a car. The car cost me 20, 20 grand. Uh, some interest accrued on that. And so I'm going to add those together and there we go. That's the total amount that, I, that I, they're going to make me pay. Um, and generally when you're doing something like buying a car, they actually list that price for you so that you know in all in all how much it is you're going to pay. But there's another way that's, I think, a little bit, a little bit, uh, it's a little bit better to use. Um, eh, maybe better is not the right word, but it, it's different to use and maybe it's a bit more common. And the, that's saying that the total installment price, the total amount of money you pay, well, you do it by just adding up everything that you pay. So you start, you start off by looking at the down payment, which is how much you paid on day one, and then you just add up all of your payments that you make from day two onward, presumably monthly payments. Um, and when you add those together, that's just all the money you've given away um, for this car or for this furniture or whatever it is. And so... Um, that gives you the total installment price. The reason that I emphasize this formula a bit more than what I've added in in, uh, in the black uh, ink down there at the bottom, uh, the reason I emphasize this that's actually typed out there a bit more is because this is just directly the amount of money that you paid. You are actually just physically adding up your down payment and then all of your other monthly payments. 
in the black ink down here, this is a little bit more roundabout of a way. You're not actually breaking it down in terms of what you've paid in terms of payments, but you're, you're breaking it down more in terms of what things cost. Um, so both, both are perfectly acceptable uh, formulas. Um, I might focus a little bit more on, on that top guy, but uh, both work. So total installment price is the total amount of money that you pay different from the price of the item. And that is very, very easily shown right there that the, definitely the total installment price and the price of the item are not the same thing. Um, all right, so finance charge. Um, this is just a fancy word for saying interest. Um, we use the term finance charge when we're talking about installment loans um, for reasons that aren't really important to get into. It's just it's just a name. Um, but in this case, it's just the interest that it, that accrues um, in the because you're financing part of this purchase because you're borrowing money on this amount financed. So let's go back to this example that we've been using. We have a car that's twenty thousand dollars. You put three thousand dollars down, so you pay them three thousand dollars initially on day one. You then have seventeen thousand dollars left over, which you're going to make in monthly payments, but they're going to charge you some interest as well on that. And to calculate that interest, that is exactly what this finance charge is. And there are two ways to calculate that interest. The, the first way, or actually the second way, which I'll describe first, is going to be this formula FRT. And we've seen this before with just a slightly different, uh, with, a, with a slightly different format. I, let's move that right there. I is equal to PRT. This is simple interest right here. Simple interest. And so how we actually calculate that finance charge, which again is just a fancy word for interest, is we just we just calculate the the simple interest that accrues on it. And we have a formula for that. That's P times R times T. What I'm using here instead of P Standing P stands for a principal amount. That's like, hey, if you're investing money, you're you're starting off with a principal amount. I'm just using F instead because F is the amount that is financed, and interest interest accrues on that. So I take that amount that I borrow, the amount that I finance, I multiply it by the interest rate, and I multiply it by the time, and that gives me the amount of interest that accrues. So this formula right here should look basically identical to this I equals PRT, that old simple interest formula that we've seen before. While we're mentioning this, it does not have to be simple interest. It could be compound interest, and that would give me a very different formula than this FRT, this PRT, it would give me a very different formula than that. Um, it'd be the compound interest formula that we've seen. We are not going to deal with those problems. Um, and the reason we're not going to deal with them is because most of the time in real life, they don't use compound interest. They just use simple interest um, in, in these installment loans. So we won't really uh, worry about that, but I feel as though it's, it's important to mention at least that it technically doesn't have to be simple interest. So that's the second way, but the way I've described first of how to find the finance charge, it's basically just, hey, do your simple interest calculation. Um, the, the first way to calculate finance charge, which I'm now explaining second, is the total installment price minus the price of the item. And here, I actually want to sort of uh, make this look like another formula that we've actually seen. I is equal to A minus p and and you might you might recognize that as just a variant of a equals p plus i i've just solved this guy for i and but again we're seeing this sort of same thing and if we think about this in terms of the the definitions and the terms and what they mean it should make sense the finance charge which is the amount of interest that accrues that's just the difference between how much you paid in total which is the total installment price everything that you paid for minus the price of the item, what you were supposed to pay, let's say. Um, so you were supposed to pay 20,000 for your car, but instead they charged you some extra interest. So you actually paid 22,000. And so if you take the difference between what you actually paid 22,000 and you subtract off 20,000, you end up with that $2,000 of interest that they added in because you didn't pay all of it in full because you financed some of it. So 
Um, that's another way to find uh, finance charge. You can think of it as either the difference between how much you were supposed to pay and how much you actually paid, or you could calculate it using uh, the simple interest formula, PRT, that we're all good uh, and, and comfortable with. So now that we have all that, let's look at two different examples of problems that we could do. Um, and, and what we'll notice is the difference between them is going to be in the information that I actually give you in the beginning of the problem, in the problem statement. So let's go ahead and look at those. So we've got uh, Jeff here and he's buying a new car for $24,650. He's able to scrounge up $6,000 before he even buys the car, and that's going to be his down payment. So I'm telling you right off the bat that he goes and he buys his, his car, he hands them $6,000, and he says, I don't have the rest, but I'd like to finance it. And they say, great, you, uh, you are going to then finance You're not going to finance all of the 24650 because you're paying us part of that price tag right off the bat. But you're still going to owe us $18,650 because that's how much you know this car costs. The car costs $24,650. You're only paying $6,000. So you're, you're going to have to come up with $18,650. And luckily, you don't have to come up with it today. You can just finance it and pay it over, oh, I don't know, 48 months. Ah, okay. So you've got this $18,650. And he, you, we, I then tell you that he pays monthly over 48 months, he pays $414 each time. And so, um, what would, what would stand to, what would stand to reason is that we want to figure out Okay, well, he financed this amount. Um, let's figure out how much he, he paid in total. Let's find the interest. And that's exactly what we are asking for. I'm asking for the amount financed, which we found very simply here. I want the total installment price and total installment price and the finance charge or the interest as well. So um, this is good. We can also we can find the total installment price actually without using the amount financed. Um, and let's let's go ahead and do that. So the total installment price so this is going to be the sum of all of the payments that he makes plus his down payment and so if we look at the sum of all of his payments that's four hundred and fourteen dollars and he made that payment 48 times so that's all of his monthly payments over the 48 months then we add to that how much he paid on day one, that's $6,000. And when we do that, we actually end up getting $25,872. And so that is how much he paid in full, all said and done over the lifetime of owning this car. That's how much he paid for the car. Now, we know how much he paid, it's $25,872, which is clearly more than the price of the car. The price of the car was this 24,650. So we could actually just take the difference here, 25,872 and subtract off the price of the car. And that is sort of the, that would stand for the extra money that he paid. Right. So this is the extra money that he paid. Like, hey, the car only cost twenty four thousand six hundred fifty, but you paid twenty five thousand eight hundred seventy two. So this one thousand two hundred twenty two is the extra amount that was paid for the car, and we have an awesome word for that: interest. And in the case of an installment loan, we call it finance charge. And right there, we're done with the problem. We got our, we got everything that we need. Um, I don't have sort of those formulas written down word for word, but just to recap what we've done here, I have the amount financed as the amount, the price of the car, minus how much uh, Jeff paid on day one. And so this, so this amount here is basically how much he's borrowing from a bank or from the, 
from the uh, person he's buying the car from. He's borrowing this money from them and he's paying that money back or that's what he's financing. He's paying that money back over 48 months, but he's also paying some interest. Based on the information that I've given you, I've given you his monthly payment and the fact that he paid $6,000 up front. And so you can add those two amounts together to find the total amount that he paid. On day one, he paid 6,000. And then a month later, he paid 414. A month after that, he paid 414. And for 48 months, he paid 414. So I take all of that, I add it to how much he paid on day one. That gives me the total amount he paid. And now I just take the difference between the total amount he paid and the total amount that he should have paid and that gives me the extra amount that he paid. And, and this is a, this is, that's our finance charge. And, and uh, it's actually coming to me, uh, maybe, maybe a, a good way to explain why this is called finance charge. Um, I like to think about it as this $1,222, it's, it's an amount, it's interest, right? So it's an amount that, that, uh, that the auto auto shop or whoever where you know the auto mall or wherever he's buying the car from it's the amount that they're charging him to finance this amount of money this 18,650 they're saying hey this car costs $24,650 you don't have all of it but we'll let you go buy this car as long as you pay us $1,222 extra as sort of a hey thanks for letting me buy the, you know, take this car home, uh, you know, I'll pay you an extra $1,222 because obviously this is money that you didn't have to pay because you could have just handed them $24,650 on day one, but he didn't have it. So he had to finance some of it. So he said, great, you can finance this. You can split this amount over your 48 months, but we're going to charge you some extra money on that, uh, the 1022 and so that's that's a that's a finance charge. It's a charge to you because they're allowing you to finance money over uh, forty eight months or whatever time period. Awesome. So we got all that. Uh, that is great. Let's go ahead and skip to a skip on over to another example here. And this time we're going to be looking at furniture. What you're going to notice here is that I don't give us the monthly payments. We actually want to figure that out. So in this case, I give us the price of the furniture of $9,000. I give you a down payment of $1,000. And then I tell you how they financed it, what the terms of the financing were. And it's that the, they did it for three years. They financed what they owed for three years at 8% simple interest per year. So we want to then go find uh, similar things to before, we want to find the amount financed and the finance charge and the total installment price, but we also want to find the monthly payment. We want to know how much this couple is going to have to pay monthly for this $9,000 of furniture. So let's go ahead and start off with the easy one. That's going to be the amount financed. And I'm going to need a little bit more space here. So let's go ahead and copy this over to a new page. So this amount financed is going to be how much do they are, are they forced to pay uh, on day two and onward. And so we know that on day one, they paid $1,000. And so the price of the item was 9000 but then they paid 1000 of that. So, so they, they paid part of it. They said, hey, we don't have all 9,000, but we can pay 1,000 of it. And then the store says, great, you owe us $8,000 still. So how are you gonna come up with it? And they go, oh, I don't know, can we finance? And they say, yeah, great, you can finance that $8,000. We are going to charge you some interest on it. So you don't just get to sp spread that $8,000 out over you know 36 months over three years you don't just get to spread that out and pay us at your leisure we're gonna we're gonna charge you to do that we're gonna add some interest in that they go okay that's fine that's fine and so what they what the store tells them is that they can finance that balance for three years at eight percent simple interest so what we can do is because we know the amount that they are financing uh and we know the terms of the financing we can actually calculate the interest that accrues and so that interest that accrues, again, we have that, that fancy name for it, finance charge. And remember, this is just simple interest. It is how much you financed, how much you're borrowing, multiplied by the interest rate, multiplied by the time. 
And so if we work all this out, we get 8,000 times 0 0.08 times 3. And notice that I have that in terms of three years because my interest rate is in terms of years. Uh, it's 8% per year, so my time is in years. And if you work this out, you get 1,920. Ooh, yeah, 1,920. I thought I misspoke there, but I didn't. So 1,920, that is the interest. That is the uh, finance charge there. And that is how much extra uh, this couple is going to pay because they uh, financed. So let's think about the total installment price here. So when we're trying to find a total installment price, we're looking at, at how much did the, did the couple pay in total. And we could attempt to figure this out by just calculate, just adding up their payments and all that. But the problem is we don't know what their monthly payment is. But here's what we do know. We know how much the furniture costs. We know that the furniture cost $9,000. And so at a bare minimum, they're paying $9,000 because that's how much it costs. The, the, the store who's selling this is not gonna let them get away with paying less than 9,000. So we know that at a minimum, at a bare minimum, they're paying $9,000. But because they're not paying it all in full right up front on day one, they're not paying all of that 9,000 in the store, they financed some of it. And because they financed, there was a charge on doing that. There was a finance charge. There was interest. And that interest represents the extra amount that they have to pay. And so if I add these together, that's just the price of the item plus the interest on their financing. That's going to give me the total installment price. It's everything that they have to pay. They have to pay for the furniture and they have to pay for financing. And so that furniture price is that 9,000 and that price of financing, that charge to, to, to allow them to borrow $8,000, that charge to do that is that 1,920. So that gives me 10,920. That is the total installment price. That is everything that they paid. Now all that is left is to find the monthly payment. And this is where we want to get a little bit clever. So our monthly payment We don't quite have a formula for this, but we can, we can come up with one. So this monthly payment is going to be uh, th how much they pay per month. And it's just on the financing, right? So this furniture, yes, it costs $9,000, but they already paid a thousand of it. So now they're borrowing $8,000 over three years. And so this monthly payment is going to be on that $8,000. But not only that $8,000, it's also going to be on the interest that accrues, right? So, so we, could, we could sort of think about this. We could write out the monthly payment is the amount financed. It's the amount that they borrowed plus the finance charge. What I'll, and then this is all be divided by something that I'll, that I'll explain in just a second. But this, this top part right here, um, what, it, what, I wanna, what I wanna really emphasize is that this amount financed looks like a P and this finance charge looks like an I. You remember we had that A equals P plus I formula. So really what I'm doing is I'm adding how much they borrowed and then the interest that accrues on that. So I'm taking the total amount that they pay from day two onward. So I'm not including the down payment in this monthly payment because they've already paid it. They've already made that thousand dollar monthly payment. So if I just put $9,000 up here, that, that doesn't work because they've already paid that thousand dollars. And so you're not gonna make them pay it again when they do all their monthly payments. So the amount of money is right here. This is how much money they have left to pay. Let's, let's actually go ahead and write that out. So, so I have yet to do this denominator, but I'll get there in a second. So this right here, this 8,000 plus 
1920, that is how much money they have to pay after they leave the store. They paid a thousand in the store, but now they have to pay 8,000 for the rest of the furniture, right? To, to cover the cost of it. And they have to pay their interest. And so this amount right here is how much they pay when it's all said and done um, from day two onward. Obviously they also pay the thousand, but we're just looking at from day two onward, just their monthly payments. Now we just divide this by, well, you take the total amount that they pay over all of their monthly payments and you just divide it by the number of months that they have to pay for. And so the number of months would be three years times 12 months in a year. So that'd just be 36 months. So we get that 9,920. That's how much they had to pay uh, when it's or from day two onward, that's all of their monthly payments. We divide it by the 36 monthly payments and they have to pay $275.56. There's two things that I want to explain here. I wanna, I wanna think, I wanna contrast first how we found the installment price here uh, with another way that you could think about it. So we found this installment price by looking at the price of the item as well as the interest that they're going to charge me to finance. We got 10,920. What you could also, how you could also think about this is, hey, they made 36 payments of $275.56. That ends up being $9,920. This $9,920 is how much they pay from day two onward. It's all of their monthly payments. And we've calculated that right there. We've seen that. And that 9,920, you could break that down even further by how much they borrowed and the interest charge. But this 9,920 is just how much they had to pay over all of their monthly payments. Well, if you take this amount and you add to that the down payment, you add $1,000 to this for that down payment, that exactly gets you that 10,920 again. And so that's me just using both of those formulas for a total installment price to show that you get to the same value of this 10,920. Obviously in this problem, we had to use this amount here because we didn't know what this monthly payment was in the beginning. Uh, so there we go. Got total installment price there. And then, the other, the other thing I want to do is actually talk about, is this worth it, right? I mean, it, and obviously it depends on who you are. It depends on your financial situation. It depends on, you know, a, a whole bunch of factors. But just thinking about this from a purely mathematical standpoint, you're going to go buy $9,000 worth of furniture and it's going to cost you 10,000, or basically let's, let's round, let's say it's going to cost you $11,000. So basically what you're doing is you're paying an extra $2,000 over the course of three years to not have to pay $8,000 of it now. If you could just come up with $9,000, boom, you'd be out the door, no financing, you're done, it's your furniture forever. But because you only came up with $1,000, you're borrowing $8,000. So basically it's a trade-off. In order to, for you not to come up with $8,000, to pay for the furniture, they're going to make you pay $275 for 36 months. They're gonna make you pay an extra two grand, that finance charge. They're gonna make you pay an extra two grand to not come up with eight grand. And and, and we, don't even, we don't need to speculate on whether that's worth it or not. I mean, it, that just depends on who you are in your scenario. But mathematically, you're thinking about that. You're, you're paying $2,000 extra for this furniture just so that you don't have to pay $8,000 more on the day of buying it. And that's, that's exactly what financing is. Um, you know, that's how, that's how people make, make their money. You know, that whoever's selling this furniture, that's how they make some extra money on, uh, you know, they make it on, on interest. So yeah, uh, there we go. That's our two examples. Just again, really, really reiterating the differences in them on, in terms of what information I gave you in this example that we just finished, I didn't give you the monthly payment and I didn't give you um, yeah, I didn't give you the monthly payment and, but I did give you the interest rate. And in the other problem, which we can, we can go back to in this other problem here, where do I have that? In this other problem, I gave you the monthly payment, but I didn't give you the interest. Um, you could actually go back and calculate the interest 
fairly easily. Um, let's actually go ahead and do that. I'm gonna sneak that up here really quick. So the interest, as we saw, we can calculate that by looking at the finance charge multiplied by um, the interest rate uh, times the time. Um, and oh, and I and I and I misspoke. Um, let me re-say that again. The interest, which is the finance charge, is equal to the amount that you finance F multiplied by the interest rate multiplied by T. Well, luckily, we actually have everything in this problem that we're looking for. We have the finance charge, the interest. We have the 18,650. We don't have R. And the time is 48 months, which is four years. And so basically, R ends up being 1,222 divided by 18,650 times four. Oops, sorry there. So 18,650 times four. And if we actually calculate this, let's go ahead and do that. We are going to get, sorry, I'm squeezing all this in, 0 0.0164, which is equal to 1.64%. We've actually calculated our interest rate right there, um, just sort of working backwards. We've taken our finance charge, we've taken the amount that we financed, we've taken the time that we financed for, and we've backtracked and solved for R. What I will say is 1.64% is all but impossible for a car payment. So maybe maybe I should change the numbers on this example. Um, you'd be very hard pressed to get anything below two and a quarter, 2%. Um, you'd have to have very, very good credit to get uh, anything that low. And I, I personally never heard of 1.64% until this problem, but there we go. So um, kind of a little addendum right there, just realizing that, hey, now that we've got this, uh, all this info down here, we can actually, we could actually backtrack and find the interest rate. Um, so we'll leave it there. That'll be the lecture and uh, good day.